Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or Home Depot.com. Thank you, Niagara. <laughs> Goodness, another week of talking football with Nate Newton, number 61, and what a difference a week makes, Nate. Look at that camera. Look at that camera and give us the name of this show. You let me tell you something, man. It was a powerful week this past week, and it's a powerful week coming up for the Dallas Cowboys. Good to see you, John Radigan. Man, it's great to see you, Nate, and it was great to see you in the Jimmy Johnson video, the tribute video at halftime. I didn't catch you anywhere else on the field or anything, but we'll talk about all the Jimmy festivities in a minute. But man, first things first, Nate, and we've been saying this for weeks. Let's don't worry about a math equation about how the 49ers have to lose this and the Eagles have to lose that. Let's just control our own destiny, and lo and behold, Cowboys win, Nate and they win the NFC East, and they secure the second seed in the NFC playoffs. I mean, that is that is all any team hopes for, right? Yeah, all you have to do is go out and win against Washington. And, and you know, Rad, uh, it, it is still not enough for the fans. Uh, uh, even at Jimmy Johnson's deal, everybody was saying, if the Eagles do this and the Eagles do that, and the e-, I say, hold on, fellas. I say, hold on. I said, do y'all understand we have a game tonight against a very good Detroit team. We must win that game in order for the Philadelphia game to mean anything. And, you know, people actually stopped and said, hmm. I'm like, yes. Yes, our media has done a fabulous job of diverting uh, the fact that The Cowboys have to win. The reason the Cowboys are in this position to close out and have a meaningful 18th game, a 17th game, whatever it is, or the 18th week, is that they continue to win. And uh, that was that was that was a hell of a game. A lot of people didn't like this Detroit game and the way it played out, but I loved it and I love the way it played out, Rad. I I I really do. Okay, so. And what what specifically did you like the fact that it came down to, you know, crunch time like that? And it was like it almost had a playoff feel, especially at the end. You know, the thing is, let's go back all the way to Buffalo, who blew you out. Yeah. Who embarrassed you this late in the season. After 12 weeks, you got embarrassed. Then you come back and you play a close one in Miami and they and they win it uh, by a field goal. And then you come back and have this weird game. Uh, you could not run the ball at all. CeeDee Lamb goes off the chain. Dak is running for his life. People making big plays here and there. Your defense is playing great. Uh, Parsons is is making an impact besides, sack, yeah. besides sacks. He's hitting people behind the line versus the run. And, and 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 Detroit told you you're not running the ball. You you can give that up. That's either with Tyron Smith or without Tyron Smith. You're not running the ball. And yeah. so this was a dog fight, up and down, up and down. You can say McCarthy mismanaged and all of that. At the end of the game, you won the game. This is this this is listen. Let me tell you something. All you people <laughs> who keep saying. You know football. You watch football. I play football. If you play football, whether it's Pop Warner, Pee Wee, college, high school, Division One, Division Two, if you play competitive football, you should know that you're going to have all embarrassment games, blowout games, uh, where you win, where you lose. Games that is not explainable. 
And when you, at the end of the day, win those games, it puts you in position to be successful at the end of the year. This was a weird game. Uh, There is no rhyme or reason to this game. But for once in the last two, three years, the Cowboy won a weird game. And it put them in a special position to have possibly not one, but two games at home where you are an undefeated team, where you have uh, unbelievable confidence. What is the problem now? What is, you, you know who you are. Yeah. You know what you have to do. Just yeah. beat Washington, not by 30 points, by one point. Play it cleanly. No penalties. No major turnovers. Show the world that you can play a clean game, a good game, be the team you're supposed to be, and then go into the playoffs with a good feeling. And get and get home games in the playoffs, yes. right? I mean, if they if they do what you just said, they will have pl- a playoff home games, which is clearly there's a difference. Now, as a lifelong Detroit Lions fan, but then you know I've been a, right. a Cowboys fan for the last 35 years, so. You know, I have mixed loyalties on that game, but I'll say this. I told you, I I know I told you off the year. I think I may have told you on the show. I was afraid that the Lions this whole season, I kept fearing it was fool's gold, right? That they were a team that was looking good here and there, but they were just going to disappoint the Lions fans at the end of the year again. I'll tell you what that game showed me, Nate. Lions are pretty good because I thought the Cowboys played great and the Lions obviously had a chance to tie the game up right there at the end. Let, let me tell you something. The, uh, Dan Campbell made a major mistake. He did. You had all the momentum, Coach. You had all the momentum. You took the ball <laughs> with minutes left on the clock. Your your. Your first round pick tight end march down the field with your quarterback. Yep. You blanked out on the first attempt. Right then, you should have put your ego to, to the side and say, "Hey, yep. I got momentum. Yeah, I, I, I can take this to overtime. They cannot run the ball. We can double team CD and make someone else beat us." This is one time Coach Campbell let his arrogance cash yep. something he couldn't could, and that's a loss yep. towards his team. Uh, yep. You tried to be slick. You tried to confuse the Cowboys, wind up confusing the refs, and cost yourself an opportunity to win uh, the game and a shot at owning the whole NFC and having a week off. So he yeah, may have so, learned so a valuable lesson there. Uh, yeah, he, I'm sure he did. He's a young coach. Yeah. Let's dive into that confuse the Cowboys versus confuse the refs thing. I, I get, I've heard that same narrative. I wonder, though, how can it really confuse the Cowboys if there's two or three or four guys over there, however many you send, if the referee comes up and says to the defense, 68 as he should have, or as we, you know, as Dan Campbell com- contends he should have, 68 is eligible, right? Like you can send the whole team over there if you want, but. The defense is going to be told which guy is eligible. I don't even understand the wisdom of trying to confuse the Cowboys. What happened last year was Dan Campbell got did in by Green Bay the same way. But they, the play wasn't successful because uh, their defense got knocked the ball down. So the play wasn't, so he like, "Uh uh-huh. Oh, okay. So what they did before the game, was they went to the ref and said, hey, number seven is yeah. going to be uh, eligible in this certain play. and uh, But they want to leave out 68. When you went to a different formation, even though 68 was at the end of the line, you did not tell the ref, when we go into this certain formation, then 68 become eligible. Because if they would have told the ref that, the ref would have told the Cowboys and the whole stadium, 70 would start out as the eligible player, but in the end, 68 would be your eligible tackle. They cannot hide okay. that. That rule was okay. put in place to keep where it could be no deception. So you will have okay. no unfair advantage on offense to let your to, – to, to trick the defense. They okay. and after defense didn't want to cover six, 68 after that, but they had the option if the coach Campbell to say at the end of the day, 68 would be the eligible man. Now it's up to the Cowboys to say, okay, we're gonna 
take it, uh, forget 70 because he going to be in motion or they will have some type of motion that would not let him be the eligible guy and we will have 68. So they tr- probably explained that before the game. But when, when, when they came in the game, even though 68 ran up and talked to the ref, which we don't know what was said, evidently no. you didn't let the world know that 68 was going to be the hot man. And right. so, and so consequently, the Cowboys, like, yes, 68 catches the pass, but if the Cowboys knew he was eligible, yes. they're probably covering yes. him, obviously, right? Yes. Now, you yeah. know, probably they will. They would have yeah. covered him. See, yeah, yeah. one thing that I like, and I want to thank Dan Campbell, is – for all your toughness and all your gruffness, you just had a stop in Dallas, and that messed you up because now you want to be the smartest man in the house, and that hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Coach Campbell, I love you. I, th- I wish your team much success. I like your toughness, but you know what? Cuteness ain't one of your things, man. You can look like Magnum right. P.I. all you want. But cuteness ain't one of your things, baby. No, no, no. I swear. <laughs> he looked like he eat up some children after that game. Man. Yes. That was, yes. That was not a happy man. Oh, no, because he thought he had out slicked everybody. Yeah. 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 And he might yeah. wind up. And then you you so set on, I'm tougher than the Cowboys. I'm meaner than the Cowboys. Instead of kicking that field goal, pulling your team in and saying, we got the momentum. We could not run the ball, right? They could not run the ball. This is right. before Tyron, I mean, uh, Tyler Smith went out, and I, we could not run that ball. Right. So, uh, and y'all had the hot hand. Your quarterback was on fire. Your tight end couldn't be stopped. You know, right. sometimes you got to, you know, somebody got to whisper in your, hey, coach, kick this field goal. We got momentum. Mm-hmm. You know, so, but anyway, mm-hmm. uh, there, yeah. his, his, his arrogance, uh, Gave us yeah. opportunity to win the game. Not yeah. once, yeah. not and you twice, know, uh, but three times. Yeah, and that's what I uh, also uh, took away from this game, Nate. It sounds like you did too, right? The Lions are that team, man, like yes. the 49ers, like the Bills, right, that that smack you in the mouth. Yes. And I thought the Cowboys, you know, unlike against the 49ers and Bills, they were right there with it. They were right there for it. They had no problem with that approach. Yeah, they did, man. They, uh, you know, I, I, I you know, it's it's just it just amazed me and 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 when you're in the media world like we are sometimes well a lot of the times over halftime I back up I back up and I rely on my instincts and what I see what I feel as a as an ex player and I'm saying to myself we had no running game that was non-existence right. bro uh, they finally realized that how valuable CD is. Now you're going to have multiple options going into the playoff because now you can you can get Cook the ball, you can get Tober the ball, you can get Ferguson the ball because they're going to be like, they're going to throw this ball to CD. You, you See, this one thing I like about the NFL and about the NBA and about Major League Baseball, you can't fake at us. Not the no, real no. teams. You can't mm-hmm. you can't line CD up and run him all over the place and not throw him the ball. That does not put fear in nobody's heart. But you put fear in their hearts when you have a game like this. Now you gonna have to when CD get in that slot or he motion across the back of that that formation. You got to you gonna have to know where your help coming from. Now, boom, Cooks gonna hit you. Now, my man, yeah. Jake Ferguson gonna hit you. Now, yeah. now you're playing with house money because now the the biggest the biggest jackpot in the house is on fire. That's CD Lamb. Yep, yep, yeah. And look, he he. You know, past a couple of Michael Irvin records. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and, and records that have stood since 95. Mm-hmm. That's significant, man. That is quite an accomplishment. Yes. If, you, if you're in the same breath with the Hall of Famer, your teammate, your bud, Michael Irvin. Yes. The thing, I've, I've watched CD grow, and I watch a lot of guys. They went for a CD. I've been, I was with CD ever since I've seen him like Bella up every year. It's like his coming out games was against Bella every year. You know, and when he played against Baylor, he's like, this kid is 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 awesome. And so yeah. even last year, I was telling people, just give him time. In the second half of the season, he caught fire and his kid, uh uh the, the thing that gets you is, and I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the season when they was learning this new offense. This this new offense, it wasn't nothing to learn for me. 
because it's it was it was all about C D Lamb. See, mm-hmm. you you listen to this right here. Every team has an impact player. Some have two. I'll start with the Boombox Boys, the 49ers. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna start with the yeah. Boombox Boys. They yeah. have two players that really scares me. Christian McCaffrey mm-hmm. and Debo Samuels. Everybody okay. likes Kittle, which I do too. I wish he was on our team. Yep. Everybody yep. like Ayuk, which I do too. Kid got over 1,300 yep. yards, uh, averaging seven, eight, 17, 18 yards to catch, seven TDs. Awesome. But when you want to make something happen, you give it to McCaffrey. And when you really want to make it happen real hard, you give it to Debo Samuels. That dude is mm-hmm. a beast. Mm-hmm. That dude's a beast. Mm-hmm. If yeah. something happened to yeah. McCaffrey, they world would not crumble because they got okay. they got Debo Samuels. They, they world would not crumble. Right. You know. All right. So let's go down the list then. Yes. Who is who are those two for the Eagles for you? Those is, is uh, number eleven, the the, uh, the big wide receiver CJ. Yeah. Is that is I'm saying? Is I got the name right? Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, that guy and. Uh, in their center. Oh, yeah. Wow. That guy yeah. in their center. As long as they got yeah. that guy in the center, Kelsey, they got a chance, man. Uh, wow. Th- those two guys are tough. Now, I don't know if, if the if, if the wide receiver, the big wide receiver, I don't know if he can stay focused. He's he started right. to get uh, selfish in, 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 in the way he's thinking because he's consumed about how many balls he get. And I, and I, and I have no problem with that. Because the offensive coordinator and, and, and the quarterback, like I told for Dak last week, how you gonna forget your bread and how you gonna forget your bread and butter? You know, how you right. gonna forget you you, bro? How you gonna forget what makes you happen? Uh, but th- those are the two guys that I like there. I, I always All go right. back how, to Kelsey. How, yeah, yeah. How about the Lions then? Is it just those two you've mentioned? Uh, that that y'all have a defensive end. That, oh, okay. Uh, from, yeah, Aiden Hutchinson. That, Aiden is your do all tough guy, mean guy, just just he's that guy. And then your coach, your head coach. Oh wow, okay. Your head coach is okay. just so and, arrogant, so uh so domineering. Okay. Yeah. 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 So all right. and yeah. then and then the cowboys, you've already said C D, so who's our other one? Don't have it. Okay. Because you have to be more than just a great athlete with me. You know, everybody said, well, why not Parsons? For the first time, I saw Parsons was impacting the game without making a sack. And that was last week. He helped against the run. And I was so excited. That was one of the things I took out of that game. Now, can he do that week in and week out? Can he do that right. in the playoffs? See, it ain't always all about the player it, with me. See, because I've been around greatness. I played, I played against greatness, and I see what greatness does. And C.D. Lamb walks out on the field, and the cornerbacks, and the safeties, and the DB coach, and the linebacker coach say, okay, we have 10 formations. We got to know where he's at every play. Do he can hurt yeah. us? Yeah. Brandon Ayuk, as great as he is, don't require that. The only way he okay. get this single coverage to have some 18-point yards, where's Debo Samuels? Where's McCaffrey? He, he you know, you know. We some guys are great, but some guys are great because, yeah, you know. So uh, yeah, in 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 the case of the 49ers, there is much more of an old, you know, for the pick your poison, yes, kind of thing, yes. right? The Cowboys don't have enough of a poison offensively other the than only CD way right we now. We don't have that poison, and the reason we don't have that poison is because we don't have a consistent, solid. Offensive line. Right. 
I, I right. talked to one of the young guys that produces a lot of our shows for his name, Caden Gates. And he said this morning, where did the Ravens come from? Wow, they have no uh, skill position guys. They got Zay Flowers. They got the quarterback. I say, don't stop. And they got, well, they don't have a tight end. I, I say, don't stop. Yeah. And he said, well, what are you talking about? They have a no, defense and an offensive line. They yeah. have a defense and offensive line. I say, I, I tell people, uh, let me say, I, I cannot say this enough. If you give me a solid offensive line or a great offensive line, or you give me a solid defensive line or a great defensive line, I don't have to have both on each side, but if they're solid, I can make my skill position players do wonders. I can make my skill position. Would you rather be one receiver away from the AFC NFC championship game? Or would you rather be four offensive linemen away from not even making mm. the playoffs? Because yeah. that is what happens when you don't have two or three good offensive linemen or two yeah. or three sound yeah. defensive linemen. You are all, you barely making it into the playoffs. Yeah. If Dak is yeah, your and guy. You know, Go ahead. On. Yeah, to your point, people, uh, you know, your, your guy wants to say they don't have any skill position players. Man, I think their quarterback is underrated. Why do people want to hate on this guy? You know what? He he likes the guy, but this is the deal. You had offensive coordinators that did not understand this kid. My only issue ever been with Lamar Jackson is I could count on him for an interception or a turnover mm -hmm. in the biggest mm -hmm. of games. Yeah. When it's yeah. for the division lead, when it's for a home field advantage, when it's for uh, just winning your comp, your, your, your deal, he's going to turn it over. That ain't happening this yeah. year. No. Because they year. went out and got an offensive coordinator, I think from Alabama. You, you, you people check it out. Hey, I really don't care about the Ravens, but I'm just telling you what I see. Yeah, I think they got yeah. an offensive coordinator from Bama that okay. understands an athletic quarterback that can throw. And he's telling everybody, this is the first play. This is 1A. And when he starts to move around, it's 1B. Your job is to find the open area. Your job is to make sure you're doing your job to yeah. help him. And that's what everybody's done. Yeah. They've given him one yeah. or two reads. They ain't trying to uh, make him have a thousand reads. And that's what that is what Dan Campbell has done for 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 the kid golf. You know, I've always liked mm -hmm. the golf, but yeah, don't ask your quarterback to not to be something he's not like that at the beginning of the year, a year ago, two years ago. Oh, statistically, statistically, stat statistics don't win games. No. Players and situations win games. And I and I was told my beautiful wife, Michelle, I said, baby, for the last four or five weeks, everybody been talking about how great the offensive line been playing. I need they need to go check the all 22. Dak has been, and I'm talking about the I'm talking about passing. This dude has been doing a hell of a job of getting out of the way some major sacks. Against Miami, they they almost hit us in the in, in the um, they almost hit us in the uh, for for a safety, and they almost got us this pass game for a safety. Dak has yes, been working right. his magic, man. Yeah, and uh, yeah. so, but I mean, is there anything you want to talk about, Raz? I mean, uh, I mean, because yeah, I want to talk. I want to talk about halftime, but I'm sure there was also some pregame and some postgame festivities with Jimmy because. Uh, uh, it was just it was such a cool moment, man. And um, I saw you I saw you in some sort of a green room hanging out with your yes, guys. Yes, I hanging was doing out it. With what, what the it other, was. Uh, the, yeah. Tell me. What, tell what me. What, was where were you? Was, tell me all I about got it. there early. And as guys was checking in, especially the guys that I knew and played, you know, with Jimmy, for Jimmy coaches, I interviewed, uh, interview Butch Davis, uh, talked to Campo all week on all the shows, Dave Campo. They were there. Yeah, uh, I interviewed Darren Woodson, uh, James Washington, 
Russell Merrill and Jim Jeff Coat, guys that was there when he got there and guys that yeah. uh, played with him at Miami. And, and so Kevin Golden was there and I, you know, I interviewed him. And so we just chopping it up, seeing what, you know, asking the guys, Hey, how you doing? And what, you know, what does this mean to you about Jimmy? And, and just to a man, the focus, like Darren Wilson said, Jimmy had the focus to prepare you to get you ready to win. And what he say? He does that in his everyday life. He prepares and focuses to win. And, and wow. that, and that was yeah. Jimmy, man, that Jimmy. And then when, and then when they brought him to the, to the up there where we was the pre, the little party, the little pregame party, you know, he said, he said, fellas, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I gave up a lot. You know, I sacrificed a lot, and he thanked his family. He thanked everybody, man. You know, just for you know for the sacrifices that they made, and oh man, it, it was just nice, man. Then he said it on the field, but I'm gonna tell you something, John Raddick, and this is what I try to tell Cowboy fans. You know what? Win, lose, or draw, Coach John said. I want to thank the millions of fans who love the Dallas yeah. Cowboys. And I also want to thank you, the million of fans that Loved despise it. us. Yes. Come on, yes. man. That was great. I, I'm like, do y'all realize we do not have to sit up and make up excuses for who we are and what we do? We them boys, right? Yeah. Come <laughs> on, awesome. man. It's so awesome. And then, of course, he punctuates it with yes. how about them Cowboys delivered perfectly. Michael Irvin and Emmett, you know, messing it, up his hair. And, and you know what makes me laugh is Troy with his handsome, historic self just yeah. sitting there smiling. Like, Troy, get in on the party, man. You go going to steal a good old ESPN, my, bro. My, my wife get said, in on the party. My wife said, does Troy not want to be there? I said, no, man, that's Troy having a great time right there. You know? time. He was, oh, believe me, man, he was bubbling inside. yeah. yeah. He was bubbling. That's that. Troy, it, it ain't a time I've call, I, I call Troy about certain quarterbacks. It ain't a time. See, I tell people, Rad, I, I like to joke, I like to jive. But if I'm if I'm at an issue in the middle of the road about something, I got guys that are yeah. experts that I can yep. call. Hey, Troy, what, what's your? This is my thoughts on this guy. Give me your wow. thoughts. Yeah. Am I way off, or should I look at this in a different way? Or, Mike, what do you think about this dude, man? Give me your, give me your honest opinion. Or, you know, and I, I try not to call Charles Haley because I have to, you know, pick out the, the things after all the cussing and craziness. <laughs> I got to say, okay, now what did he say and what did he really yeah. mean? And then Charles will want something from you too. If he give you something, he wants something oh. back. Now, <laughs> oh yeah, nine times out of ten is monetarily. <laughs> No, I was just joking, Charles. Don't call me cussing yeah. me out. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, and so were you in that whole group that was uh, like lining the field when Jimmy came out? Were you in that? Some of yeah. Were you in that group? No, no. I stayed okay. up. I stayed up. I stayed up because that that was that was him. That was that was Jimmy's and Jerry's and Ring of Honor guys' yeah. time. Uh, a lot of people went down there, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you some rad. Uh, you can be happy for somebody like I'm excited. I love what happened there, but you can never be unless you are in it, a part of that ring of honor hugging. Yeah. And say, I mean, oh, I'm happy for you, coach. Hey, man, let get out the way. It's ring of honor time. Let all the ring of honor guy. And I tell people, you know, that's one thing I try to tell people. It, certain things, I, I don't care what you do. It's like you and your wife married. It ain't nothing that your brothers and sisters can do. They can be happy for y'all, but you it's you yeah. and your wife. And you and y'all got yeah. that bond. And, and and that's how I looked at it. I said, you know what? You know, people like, man, you ain't going down to the field. I'm like, nah, I've already talked to the coach, told him I love him. And uh hey, hey, let me tell you something right quick, like right? let me tell you something right yeah. quick, like ain't nothing changed because here we are up in the thing, right? He talking to everybody, ah, how you doing? Da, da. He taking pictures to everybody. And I'm saying to myself, okay, it's the same thing. I'm going to tell you a quick story and then we can go, okay? Mm -hmm. We in training camp. And he walks up to Troy. I'm watching him. He walks up to Troy. How you doing, Troy? How you feel, man? Is your arm all right? We don't want to get your arm sore. If your arm get a little sore, let us know, Troy. Ah, oh, no, Coach, I'm all right. You know, Troy, I'm good, Coach. Yeah. I'm good. 
And then he goes up to Mike. Mike, I know he goes up to him. Emmett, Emmett, how you doing? You all right, man? You know, we don't want to run you in the ground during training camp, man. We want to save your legs, you know, inside run. I'll just do one or two reps, coach. All right, Emmett, let me know if something ain't right. Uh, Michael Irvin, you the, you the my barometer on the team, Mike, man. We, we, you know, if your legs get tired, then I know it's time to get a break. How you, you doing? All, coach, oh, I run all day, coach. I'm your yeah. man, <laughs> coach. I'm like, wow. Then he walks up to me. Nate, you better have a good practice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah. what? I'm like, well, coach, I don't want to know if anything hurt on you. You just better have a good practice. I'm, I'm looking at you. And so I said, all right, coach. I just started laughing. He walked, he smiles, walks away. Then I, the other night, you know, everybody talking to him, be taking pictures. How you doing? How you kids? He see me rash, yeah. right? I'm like, Coach Jay, what's up, baby? What's up, Coach Jones? First thing he said, they told me to run your fat ass away from here. I'm like, <laughs> he didn't even ask me how I was doing. <laughs> he didn't even care. <laughs> once again, once again, <laughs> I'm like, being the fat man is going to be hell against me forever, right? <laughs> You're not even fat they anymore. Run your fat ass. I, yeah. I said, coach, you know what? He said, what, Big Newton? I said, I'm still here. He said, yes, yeah. you are. Yeah, I'm like, I can't get no love. I can't get how your family yeah. doing, how where your yeah. kids at. It's like, wow, they told me to run your fat ass. Away. I'm like, hey, come on. Hey, I'm just glad. <laughs> I'm just glad he didn't listen to him. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, I'm man. I'm just glad he didn't listen to. Him. God is good, that's, man. That's fantastic. God man, is good. That is fantastic, Nate. That's fun. I, I, I'm so <laughs> glad you got to be a part of that. I'm so glad so many guys were there. Well, you know who's one of the most fascinating out of all of them to me is Gogan. What's Kevin Gogan doing? Living life, yeah. having a good time. He was hanging out with Mike Saxon. Oh, yeah. And that, that, them two there together. You know, I, I, I like I told myself, I hope y'all don't go to no local <laughs> oh, bars God. because you will be remembered. Uh, Matt, Matt uh, Vanderbeek oh, was yeah. there. I can't think of my other boy. Uh, he came out of it. It's it just people there. I can't even think of their uh, name. And it was just so good to see randy yeah, white yeah, of course, and tony always. dar said yeah. and bob lily Drew. and mel renfro it just the list goes on and on yeah. man it's just great people yeah. you know and then uh money was up there i i used to be the president of cbs i used to be the president of fox oh, lord jeez then all the fox guys yeah. the howie yeah. uh uh mcafee is that, that uh, right? Menifee. 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 yeah Menifee. yeah uh, you know what uh, 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 terry bradshaw uh, yeah, Strahan and Brash, all, all of them was there. I'm like, wow. Jimmy has been touched and has touched a yeah. lot of people's lives. And, uh, and in a positive way, you know, like he said, he said, y'all, y'all won't remember this. You know, after all them Super Bowls, he said, y'all won't remember. He said, but years later, all of this will come back and I won't look like the meanest, hateful a-hole in the yeah. world. And to this day, he's right. Yeah. Yeah, my wife now. My wife coming over here trying to get in on my. You want to come get on the thing, baby? Yeah, she. Oh, that's right. She yeah, wants my to weigh in. Fully, yeah, my baby ain't fully dressed. Oh, yeah, okay. she better not come over all here. Right, all right. Sexy all right. All right. <laughs> well, man, it's been great. It was so fun to hear those stories and 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 uh, sort of be inside uh, where the where the action was happening uh, with the Ring of Honor ceremony. So, uh, man, we did it again, Nate. We flushed another one. Thanks, Niagara. The, Niagara, thank you. Love you. I'm going to use the restroom and drink coffee. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Hey, Rand, that was a good one, man.